I will turn my mic over to Colonel Robert Springer. Thank you very much. Well, it's a, it is a real, uh, real pleasure to be here. And, and uh, to put things in perspective, uh, I just uh, as, as I look out of, as a field of very, very young faces, uh, uh, so I, I actually, uh, I said, graduated from high school in 1960, flew my space flights in 1989 and 1990. So it's been over 30 years since I flew in space. So uh, things have changed a bit, uh, but and, and things haven't changed. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that we're pursuing today that uh, we've been working on for years. And, and continuing to make some uh, real interesting progress. And what I'd like to do uh, is, sh is share that with you. One of the things I want to put, uh, give you an idea about uh, when it comes to getting selected for things like, uh, like the Naval Academy or the astronaut program or whatever that, uh, I mean, it never hurts to work hard and, and, uh, and to really dedicate yourself to it, but uh, a good bit of it is uh, not so much chance, but opportunity. And it's a, it's a word you're going to hear me use a lot because uh, one of the things I like to tell young people is you, you have to be aware of the opportunities that are out there for you and seek them out. And then when you do, uh, take advantage of them. Graduated from the Naval Academy. I took my commission in the United States Marine Corps. I really uh, wanted to fly and, uh, and get into that. So I, uh, I went through a, a flight school and fly, flew a, a variety of different type of airplanes. Uh, and, and again, uh, this is the opportunity, taking a little bit of a risk from time to time and doing things that are out of the norm. Uh, ended up flying the F-4 airplane, uh, flew a couple thousand hours in that uh, as a test pilot. Uh, later in my career, I uh, ended up flying some 20 or 30 different types of aircraft. Uh, one of our current first line fighters, the F-18, this was an early model of the F-18 that I had a, I had a chance to fly. Along the way, uh, uh, before uh, Top Gun was a movie, I, I was uh, very fortunate to, uh, to be able to get selected and, uh, and go through the, uh, the Top Gun school. So uh, in, the, in the late uh, 1970s, uh, this is something that uh, appeared in the, in the Houston newspapers. Uh, have you, do you want to uh, dream of being in space? Training for the flight was uh, unique. We did some unique things on this. This is a KC-135. We'd go out and fly a, a series of parabolic arcs, as you can see up there. So you take the airplane, uh, do a 2G pull up, as you went over the top of that arc, uh, you, you push forward on the stick and you would actually get uh, about uh, as much as 90 seconds of true weightless conditions. Now you've, uh, you've spent, in my case, uh, almost uh, six years in, in training for that uh, flight. Uh, and it all comes together. Uh, when you do the startup, the uh, shuttle main engines, they actually ignite six seconds before liftoff. That allows the temperatures and pressures to uh, stabilize. And if everything looks good, the computer sends a command uh, and you ignite those solid rocket boosters and you just absolutely leap off the pad. Once you hit that, that with that uh, seven million pounds of thrust from the uh, shuttle solid rocket boosters, as you clear the top of the launch tower, you're pulling three times the force of gravity uh, and you're traveling over 200 miles per hour, uh, almost instantaneous after launch. Uh, you, inside the cockpit of the shuttle, everybody has their own area of responsibility to look at from the switches and gauges. And this is where all the training takes place. And, and this is where the, the whole team concept and the working together uh, is, is really part of it. Uh, because you're depending on each other to everybody to do their job properly uh, as you're accelerating up through uh, up through the atmosphere. We ride those solid rocket boosters for two minutes and ten seconds. Uh, incredibly dynamic ride. At that point in time, we jettison those off. Uh, they fall back in the ocean and uh, and land in the ocean, and then we uh, we continue on uh, for an eight and a half minute flight uh, that takes to get into space. So spent a lot of time uh, as much as I could uh, looking out the window at the different sites. Uh, you know, it's, it's really neat to look out at, at the stars. It's a beautiful scene. Uh, of course, you're 200 miles up. You're above the uh, pollution here on the Earth. Uh, so you get an absolutely pristine view of uh, the star fields and all that. Uh, this one uh, combines a little bit of the, uh, uh, the limb of the Earth uh, with the sun just setting with the star field in the, in the background. My favorite picture, and it's uh, not just because I took it, uh, but, but this was uh, really interesting. So what, we, what you're seeing there is uh, the use the uh, limb of the earth to bisect the setting sun. That color spectrum that you see there, that is the sunlight reflecting off uh, the atmosphere. Well, it's, it's great to be here and uh, what a, a golden opportunity to see uh, what has uh, transcribed and uh, transformed here as, as the far as the uh, getting ready for the, uh, the, the whole science platform. Uh, it really a critically important part. Uh, I, I, I try and remind people I'm an engineer, not a scientist, but the, the, the two intermingle quite a bit and uh, I can really appreciate uh, 
you know, in, on my two flights in, uh, in the space shuttle, uh, although they were not primarily science uh, missions, uh, we did some rudimentary science on, on orbit, and it was interesting to uh, to see how that information, in, in a building block fashion, you know, build on little pieces of knowledge. Uh, start off with today on the International Space Station, uh, we're taking that uh, to an, an extreme and and developing new pharmaceutical products uh, and uh, new processes, new materials that we're doing all in the venue of space and uh, and it's laboratories like this facilities like this uh, that, uh, that give young people the opportunity to uh, investigate uh, to challenge uh, themselves in many cases and I hope you will uh, as you uh, utilize the facilities that are here uh, to learn more and and to find out where you uh, individually fit into uh, the scheme of things and, and uh, where you may find a, a niche that allows you to make a, a contribution, be it big or be it small, but uh, to be a part of this ever-growing uh, science. And, and you know, it, uh, like we learned on the space shuttle, uh, it, it is a, a team effort and just uh, having to talk to Dr. Mara and, and others who've been involved in, in pulling this all together, uh, it's another example of a teamwork. I hope that's not lost on the students as well. Uh, it takes a lot of people working together, everybody contributing, and uh, and being able to focus your efforts and, and to bring something of this caliber to fruition. So, uh, uh, fantastic opportunity. Thank you for sharing it with me and, and letting me be a, a part of it. And uh, just wish you nothing but success in the future. Thank you. Thank you.